Good morning, everybody. We are going to go ahead and get started here because we have some time constraints this morning. I'm Ted Blank. I'm the Executive Director of the Forest Lake Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much for joining us today. And I want to make sure we uh, acknowledge the folks here at Famous Dave's for putting on such a nice breakfast for us. As you know, Famous Dave's isn't normally open for breakfast, so uh, they went out of their way for us. So we really appreciate that. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and start with the program, and then I will save the announcements until the very end. So I'm going to introduce Alan Bakke from Sherman Insurance Agency, who is going to moderate this morning's legislative breakfast. Thanks, Alan. Good morning, everybody. We're really happy to see a great crowd today. We've got a lot of, of representatives and senators and representatives of the National Senate and representative offices, so we're going to have to move it right along. Plus, we have several of our representatives who have a 9 o'clock meeting at the Capitol, and they'd kind of like to get there in time. What I'd like to do is to call, call them up, and let's get going here. I don't know, I haven't noticed if everybody is here, but is Megan uh, Bachmeyer here? Megan, good. Zach Freeman, Freemark? Good, you're here, right? Rick Olsen, I saw you, yep. Roger Chamberlain, where's Roger? Not here. Karen Housley is here, I see her. Sean Nenow, Bob Barrett are here, Bob Detmer. Linda Runbeck. Did I see you? No. Well, what I'd like to do is have all of you folks come up now and join me up here. We're going to give each of you a couple of minutes to talk about the significant issues that you're working on right now. And then we'll open it up to questions. Come on up. I'm going to start with Bob Detmer. Uh, our two Bobs have meetings this morning and they need to get going. So, Bob Detmer. Thank you, thank you, Alan. Is this, uh, is this mic on? Can you hear better with the bike? Okay. Uh, again, uh, State Representative Bob Detmer. I'm in my fifth term here at the State Capitol. And uh, it's a bus uh, busy, this is a busy time of the year. Uh, all the omnibus bills are coming out uh, this week and next week. So, uh, we have, uh, I, I feel like I'm uh, one leg of a three legged stool. You've got uh, the, the Republican uh, budget, you got the Democrat budget, and you got the governor's budget. And we're all going to be working on that, uh, getting our bills through, and, and uh, see what we come up with in, in the conference committees. Uh, I serve on four committees. I'm the chair uh, of this uh, part, which is under the state government finance. I'm the chair of the Veterans Division. And uh, I hear all the different uh, veterans bills that comes before me. As you know, I'm uh, pretty partial to that's a part of my, uh, my being and my family. We feel that uh, well, we can, as a state, we can do some great things for our veterans. Uh, and I'll never stop trying to do that, obviously. And I also serve in the state, gov the state government finance, which the Veterans Division falls under. Um, the state government finance uh, has a big responsibility uh, for state government, the financing the different agencies that you see in, in the government. And also, I serve on the uh, K-12 Education uh, Committee. Uh, as you know, I spent uh, 34 years here, right here in Forest Lake teaching and coaching. And uh, I still do a little subbing uh, when, uh, when I can, when I get the call. You get that call in the morning, uh, uh, electronic call. And uh, uh, for the most part, during the session, I can't uh, come in and do any, do any subbing. And, I, and then I also serve on the Ways and Means. That's the big committee. That's where all finance bills come in eventually before they go to the, uh, to the Rules Committee and then go on to uh, the vote on the House floor. So uh, that's uh, where I'm at right now. And I'm uh, excited about, uh, we have five weeks left of the session. And uh, we're excited about getting the, our bills through. Uh, my, of course, one of the, one of the priorities I have, uh, I've been working on for, uh, and now uh, five, six years now, is uh, we're one of the few states that still tax uh, our veterans' retirement pay. That's something that I want to try to eliminate. Uh, Iowa just got rid of that pack, uh, tax last session. Uh, there's only six states that still have that tax. So uh, that's one area I'm, wor I'm working on. And there's other areas in terms of uh, uh, tax, too. Thank you. I'd like to, in I'd like to introduce Bob Barrett, Minnesota representative. 
Anybody have a watch? I'll uh, keep it to two minutes. Uh, Bob Barrett, uh, state rep for uh, southern part of Chisago County. I serve, uh, it's my third term, and uh, serve on three committees. I'm on the Taxes Committee. I'm Vice Chair of the Taxes House Taxes Committee. I'm on Higher Ed, and I'm on Greater Minnesota Rural and Economic uh, Development uh, Jobs Committee. Um, as you know, I believe there's a $2 billion surplus right now in our state budget. If you look out a few years, that surplus uh, doesn't look so rosy. I think we have some clouds on the horizon, but right now it's, uh, it's fairly good. $2 billion surplus. Democrats, Republicans going to be looking at what to do with that money. Sent out a survey about uh, two, three weeks ago regarding what to do there. I have put seven questions in the survey. Um, um, very interesting. I don't have the results quite yet. I have some online survey results. But one of the questions I asked is, um, should uh, Governor Dayton has a proposal to increase the gas tax by a minimum of 16 cents? That would be an additional wholesale sales tax anytime the wholesale price of, I think I'm going to pick this up. Um, and uh, so I put that in my survey. Uh, do you believe that we should increase gas taxes by at least 16 cents a gallon, knowing that that 16 cents a gallon will go up as the wholesale price of gas goes up? Um, about 22% said yes, about 78% said no. Um, a lot of people believe, as I do, that we have existing resources to, uh, to fund our transportation. Um, a couple days ago, I think, uh, we marked up our transportation bill in the House, $7 billion over 10 years uh, we're uh, devoting to uh, transportation. We have huge transportation needs in our state. Uh, we believe that we can use existing money. One idea I had was, uh, was the um, uh, my, our, uh, motor vehicle sales tax. I don't know if uh, you all know this, but 40% uh, of our motor vehicle sales tax that we, uh, we spend when we buy a new or used car is uh, diverted to transportation. If you look at uh, some of the transportation or tra uh, transit projects, we have North Star Corridor. We spent $380 billion with the B, $380 billion, is that right? No, $380 million, I'm sorry, on North Star. About $12 million of that has come from the people that have used North Star. So everything else is a subsidy. So those are things we need to look at. If uh, transit projects or transportation projects or any part of government spending is doing well, maybe we should look at doing more of it. If uh, the spending is not meeting its need, too costly, not serving the, uh, enough people, we should do less of it. North Star is a great example. Initially, they said 5,000 cars are going to be taken off the road every day. Uh, about 1,000 cars are being taken off the road. That's, uh, if my math is right, that's an 80% uh, reduction from what they thought was going to happen. So. Government needs to uh, look at things like that and make decisions based on facts. And uh, North Star probably isn't a good thing going forward. So I think my two minutes are probably up. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce Senator Sean Nino. Thanks for coming, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to be here. Um, for those that uh, know or don't know, uh, I am the GOP lead on the uh, K-12 Committee for Education, uh, Finance and Policy. Uh, later today, um, uh, I serve in the Senate in the minority, uh, so uh, we are not the ones that uh, get to produce and move forward these major budget bills. So later today, uh, I and my uh, committee members will be meeting with Senator Weger, who's the chairman of the Education Committee, and we will find out what the final Senate proposal is for the K-12 budget. Um, based on what we have heard and what we have seen in committee and in press conferences and what we've heard and seen from the governor, <coughs> uh, more than likely, most of that funding is going to be tied to mandates. It's not going to be money that we hand over to the school and say, spend it the way that you see fit. It's going to be handed over to the schools and say, you must spend this on early childhood education or all day kindergarten or wh whatever the case may might be. Uh, uh, the, the approach that I would prefer, uh, and that was actually in a bill that came from the Senate Republicans, I'm the chief author, uh, is that we will, whatever the dollar figure, we didn't want to fight about the dollar figure. What we wanted to have the discussion about was who gets to control how the money is spent. And what we would like to see is that whatever the dollar figure is that we come up with on a K-12 budget, that the schools choose how to spend that money. If that means you want smaller class sizes, great. That means you want larger class sizes and you want universal pre-K, 
great. Whatever you want to do. So that is the approach that we will be fighting for, uh, the members in my caucus. That, that is the approach in the bill that I authored. I think it's Senate File 1173, if I remember the number correctly. Uh, and we will find out what the Senate proposal is later today, later this afternoon. Uh, that bill will actually be posted and available to the public online. So if you want to take a look, you can get on the Senate website and you'll see it. Uh, you'll probably hear something about it, I would imagine, in, in the next uh, coming days. We're going to have a hearing on it on Thursday, I believe, is, if I remember, recall correctly. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Senator Karen Housley. Hi, I'm Senator Karen Housley, and I also sit on the Education Finance Committee where uh, Senator Nino is our chair. Um, and so we are looking forward to 1 o'clock today to find out what's in there. One of the bills that I authored this year, and for three years I've had Superintendent Madsen and Ross Bennett and more from the uh, Forest Lake School District come down to the Capitol. There's something called alternative facilities, and you might have seen the article in the Forest Lake Times a couple of months ago. Uh, the s funding from the state it goes to the school districts unequally when it comes to uh, maintenance of the, their school facilities. And there are 27 school districts in the state that get money from the state to maintain their buildings, and Forest Lake isn't one of them. And so that, that kind of didn't sit well with me and with, with Superintendent Madsen. So we've been, we've, each year we go sit before the committee and say, here's what, you know, the, the swimming pool is, is falling apart. You have to sign a waiver if you're going to uh, be a member of the swim team. Can't have any uh, swim tournaments here in Forest Lake. So that's one of the, and I, I'm, we've tried so hard with uh, the chair of the Education Finance Committee, um, Senator Weger, to have him hear this and listen to us and the inequality. So hopefully today at one o'clock, this will be the third year in, the ro in a row that, I mean, I've tried, I've bought him drinks. <laughs> I am working this thing. But it is, and, it, and, and the, um, the, it goes to the school board uh, for the decision to get this funding. So hopefully that we can hear something today at one o'clock. I also sit on the uh, Commerce Committee where all of the liquor bills that always get all the fun air time um, I go through. Senator Metzen from South St. Paul is the chair there and I talked to him yesterday and it looks like Sunday liquor sales will not be on the table this year. But it's always a fun thing for the media to talk about. And I also sit on the state and local government committee. And I think Sean covered what we're going to be doing today at 1 o'clock in the education. But um, last in, first out is another priority for us in the Senate Republican Caucus where the last teacher hired when there's budget cuts is the first teacher fired. And um, how that affects our students. So stay tuned. Too bad we couldn't have this like tomorrow, but thank you so much for having us. I'd like to introduce Rick Olsen, representing uh, Rick Nolan's office, U.S. Representative. So I'm Rick Olsen. I'm a field rep for Congressman Nolan. And I just always like to tell people the 8th Congressional District starts in Wyoming and Princeton, and it goes all the way to Canada. Then it goes from Duluth, it skirts Bemidji, and it includes Grand Rapids, Wadena, and Park Rapids. So it's a huge area, 19 counties. And um, I cover what we call the Pickham counties, Pine, Isani, Chisago, Kanabic, and Mille Lacs. So I work with a lot of different government organizations and um, really enjoy the job. But uh, last week, two weeks ago today actually, um, Mintech announced they were laying off 700 people up on the range up in Eveleth. And uh, that, with another layoff, there's about 1,200 miners laid off, and uh, Congressman Nolan was up there right after that, and uh, it's very troubling for him and probably the whole state of Minnesota. And the avenue that he's taking is that they're dumping steel. Foreign companies are producing steel and they're selling it in the United States for under cost of production, so it's subsidized steel being dumped in the United States. So he's been really adamant meeting with uh, Senator Klobuchar, Senator Frank, and, and Congressman Nolan met with uh, President Obama just a few weeks ago to talk about this. So that's a huge issue in the 8th Congressional District. Um, the other one is the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership, and he's adamantly against that. And the steel is a perfect example of how uh, countries around the world are subsidizing some of their products that are driving down commodity prices and prices in the United States. Um, well, just a couple of weeks ago, we were also in Cambridge for a Safe and Sober Cab Forum. And that's a program that really started in Isani County where bars will offer 
um, patrons who had a little bit too much to drink a free ride home. And we're looking at the congressman who's so pleased with what Judge Dean has started over there, he's going to try to move this on a national level. And just think of all the lives that could be saved by people getting a ride home from the bar if they've had a little bit too much to drink. Um, then, just last week uh, during the recess, uh, Representative Klein came up and they visited, I got to read this now, it's the Bagone Jinxing School on the Leech Lake Reservation. And this is an old pole barn that's been converted to a school and it's just horrible. And so they're really working, because it's under the Bureau of Indian Affairs, they're trying to get funding to replace that building. And it's been a really bipartisan effort, really getting national attention. Um, and then uh, transportation. Congressman Nolan is the only representative from the Minnesota contingency that's on the Transportation Committee. So um, it's very important to him. So essential air in the rural parts of the 6th, that airports still can have commercial service where it might not be viable. But uh, with the essential air service, they're able to offer that. And then um, railroad crossings is a big deal from Cambridge up to Rainier and the Canadian border, are all things that he's been working on. But the biggest thing about transportation, and state senators and representatives recognize this too, that gas tax is the fundamental funding for this. But two things are happening. Number one, people are on the aggregate are driving fewer miles than they have in the past. And then obviously, cars are getting much better mileage. Even big trucks are getting better mileage. So the revenue coming into the Federal Highway Trust Fund, and likewise the state of Minnesota road funding, is decreasing because as it's a good thing, you know, that they're getting all this better mileage. And then there's the whole story about the electric cars, and they don't get any gas tax, so thank you. I'd like to introduce Zach Freemark from uh, Congressman Tom Emmer's office. Thank you, thank you guys for having me. Um, now just uh, three priorities I want to talk about quickly in our short period of time that, I got it. Can you hear me okay? Rick's got a, I got a few inches on Rick, I think. Um, now three priorities we want to, I just want to address with you guys quickly. Obviously Congressman Emmer's uh, just going to be, is about to complete his first 100 days in office. Um, freshman uh, Congressman from the 6th Congressional District right here. Um, three priorities that we've really kind of set out on, uh, one being uh, transportation. Uh, uh, first piece, of tra or two, his, he just introduced two pieces of legislation, one of them being the National Interchange and Intersection Safety Construction Program Act. Basically what this does is redirects highway trust fund money to concentrate on in our, uh, the intersections and interchanges that we have in the uh, well, in the United States, but most specifically in the 6th Congressional District, we're talking about Highways 55, 94, uh, 212, Highway 10. Here in uh, Highway 35, specifically on um, Highway 35 in the overpass on 97, I was driving on this morning and I thought the thing was going to collapse on me because it, it just it looks in real, real bad shape. So. Um, the congressman is really dedicated to transportation. He ran on his campaign. We polled on it that transportation is the number one issue to our constituents. And so he's heard that and, you know, that's where we're attacking. Number two, the veterans. Uh, he's really working hard on veterans issues. One being the veterans choice, strengthening veterans choice. Veterans choice is basically created in the scandal of the VA that essentially uh, veterans couldn't, after sometimes years, couldn't get appointments with their VA doctor. Veterans Choice was created so they could go see private doctors and the government would pay for it. But um, there were, as there always is, issues with that. So what uh, the congressman did was, and these bills are always crazy names, keeping our promise to the Veterans Act. Basically what this is going to do is allow, strengthen and allow more veterans to get, to have the option to do Veterans Choice, which would allow them to go to private uh, private physicians and require the federal government to actually pay those physicians on time because right now a lot of those physicians are not getting paid therefore they're declining uh, services to the uh, you know, veterans and TPA is another huge issue for the congressman that's actually one thing that he's been working on the most um, disagreeing with congressman Klein or congressman Nolan that um, you know TPP TTIP some of these other issues that are going to be huge factors in job creation in the 6th congressional district so that's all I got I'd like to introduce Megan Bachmeyer from Senator Amy Klobuchar's office. 
Good morning, and thanks for having me here. Uh, I wanted to pass along the Senator's uh, regrets that she couldn't be here in person with you, but she thanks you for the invitation. Uh, after a couple weeks of recess here in Minnesota, she is back in Washington, D.C., in session, uh, where she sits on the Agriculture, Commerce, Judiciary Committees. She also is the Senate Chair of the Joint Economic Committee, um, and she serves on the President's Export Council to give you a sense of some of the roles that she plays um, in, in uh, Washington, D.C. But I just wanted to take this opportunity today to actually introduce myself to you as we represent the entire state, wanted to give you a sense of um, I'm your contact person in the business community. I cover business and commerce issues for the senator here in Minnesota. And so wanted to keep it very brief today and just let you know that I will be here afterwards and I'd love to connect with you one on one if you have any issues. I'd love to take this as an opportunity to really learn from you about what our office can be doing to help you. So thanks for having me. I want to apologize to all you politicians. A politician loves a microphone. They'll use every second we can give them. We got enough people, though, we needed to move it along. And apologize to all of you. What I'd like to do now is open it up for questions. And the way we want to do it is the, you ask your question, and whoever up here is best qualified to answer that question. For example, if you ask one on transportation, then whoever's on the transportation <laughs> subcommittee can address that. Uh, let's have some questions. Yes, Linda. Hi, I'm Linda, Councilwoman from the City of Wyoming. Uh, this is mostly for my representatives. We have a portion of Highway 8 from Forest Lake to Chicago City. There's been a transportation study done on it. It can be improved to provide increased economic development for the City of Wyoming and, above all, safety for people traveling to Wisconsin and for the people living in the vicinity. Uh, the, from what I understand, the study is about to go stale. And I hate to see all that money spent on the study and nothing ever gets done. So I would like to ask my representatives what can be done to get to free up some money to fix that portion of my eight. Right. The question is, what can be done to fix a portion of Highway 8 in Chisago County? The studies have been done, it's needed, Nothing's happened so far. Linda's very concerned that the study will go stale and old and the money go away. What can be done? Thank you, Linda, for the question. Um, so uh, let me answer the question quickly, and if I don't answer it, make sure, you know, give me a wave. I'll try to do it a different way. I think you're referring to the eight-mile stretch between Forest Lake and Chisago City, in which a study's been done to move it from a two-lane highway to a four-lane highway. Study's been done, it's been done for a few years. Uh, that project is, is right now, sadly, very low on MnDOT's radar. As a, a representatives, we can't, it's very difficult for us to get one project up, uh, other than the per power persuasion. Um, there's uh, very little direct appropriations for funding projects. So we give the money to MnDOT, they make their choices. Governor Dayton's budget, he, uh, in which he wanted to spend $10 billion on road projects in Minnesota, he had two projects for Chisago County. Um, Mill and Overlay up in Harris on a stretch of I-35 and the Osceola Bridge. Those are the only two. My recent study I did, or survey I did to uh, Chisago County residents, I asked them about eight, eight different projects. What would they like? Would they like an overpass going up to the North Branch Industrial Park? Would they like the high... Uh, Highway 30 to be uh, to redone by North Branch. Would they like a truck uh, bypass in Taylor's Falls? Do they want Highway 8 to be moved from two lane to four lane? Do they want money for um, uh, local and uh, township roads? The two projects that rose to the level, I didn't even include Osceola Bridge because I thought nobody would, would care. Um, the two projects were Highway 8, um, Highway 8 and local, uh, local uh, roads. It's going to take about $30 million to do that, maybe a little bit more. Uh, but right now, it's set for $30 million. We need to find the $30 million. I think we should do it. I'm, uh, I think, the first rep in, in a, ever, I believe, I could be wrong, to actually talk about Highway 8, about making that uh, four lanes. I agree with you. It's, uh, it's a dangerous stretch of highway. Highway 8 is getting more safe, though. If you look at the studies, highway, there's a Highway 8 study. You should read it. it it's... Uh, there you go. So you've read the study. You know it's, it's getting safer, but it still isn't where it needs to be. But I agree with you. Economic development is crucial. And uh, um, so I agree with you. I, did I answer that question or not? Actually, you answered it very well. But my question is, since the state is so strapped for money, what about federal funds? <coughs> 
question. Well, ironically, I mentioned that I cover five counties for Congressman Nolan, and in those five counties, I can whip off $100 million in road projects like that. And Highway 8 expansion is certainly one of the best, and it's of good value. The cost per mile for lane mile to build that to four lanes is very reasonable. Unfortunately, um, all the safety improvements that were done on Highway 8 were back in the day of earmarks. And uh, you all remember that $100 million bridge to nowhere in Alaska, and that earmarks have gone away. In my political career, earmarks have always been used in uh, this area for safety improvements, and they're gone now. So it's very hard at the federal level, similar to the state, you can't really designate where those dollars are going without the earmarks. So, so it is a problem. And you know what the federals do on the Federal Highway Trust Fund bill, that's a big part of it. So hopefully the, that bill will move forward. Thanks. Well, Iran. Next question. Got a question, anybody? Holy cow. Well, all right. I've got some. You know, when you got to do these things, you might as well be prepared, right? <clears throat> Area cities have adopted resolutions of support for legislative funding to replace the Highway 97 bridge over I-35. How are you helping make this project a reality? Thank you, Alan. That that uh, that's the same route I got to take every uh, day now to go down the Capitol. And just coming here today, uh, that was backed up all the way to the Quick Trip uh, gas station. And uh, Tom Heckbarth and I uh, are co-authoring a bill. It's $25 million to get that project. To, so you put in a, a four-lane bridge going across, uh, making sure that people can get off that bridge and get down going south in, in, a, in a fast fashion. There's different, uh, in fact, Anoka County is, is in charge of this project. And uh, we'll also be looking to uh, the federal government to help us out there. MnDOT only wants to put in three thousand or three million dollars. Uh, they just want to do an overlay, and that's not going to do it. So we need to tear the the existing bridge down, put up a new bridge, and hopefully we can get that done. Um, I know we have the bill in. We hope we can get that done. So. Just briefly on that, no, I mean, that's that's absolutely on our radar, and, you know, Bob and I were just talking that we want to meet this week about, you know, seeing what we can do to get some federal dollars into that, because it just completely ties into what the congressman just, you know, introduced uh, two weeks ago. Um, I mean, I can tell you that we were up here, uh, I was driving with uh, Tom, I'm just going to call him Tom, because that's what he would want me to tell say. Um, Tom, you know, we were driving up here to speak at a veterans event. And he goes, Zach, that's the bridge. And you see, he pointed out 97 and just how it was backed up and how, you know, decrepit, like I said, decrepit it looked. And so it's obviously on our radar and we've got to work with, you know, these guys to really direct funds where it needs to be. And that's what uh, the purpose of the bill. So, Yes, Linda. Yes. I'm Linda Bassett. I'm the superintendent of Fort Lake Area Schools. And we have tried to be become more politically active um, in the last few years. And this year, um, we've really identified three things that um, some of our local legislators have helped us with. Um, and so kind of stating it just as this is um, what we need, and I'm sure you've heard that, but also where we're at, we hear that probably this afternoon we'll hear a little bit more, but it's about 3% of the formula each year. We cannot make it. We've cut $2 million this year, and we're going to end up cutting more if we don't get that 3% each year. We have a transportation bill um, that was um, introduced, and it's the transportation meaning we drive a lot of miles in this district um, because of the, the, the number of the space in our, in our district. And then also all facilities, as, um, um, as Senator Helsley mentioned, for the state, for every school district. And I've said this before, I think it's best that every school district in the state has that ability. Um, but if that's not going to happen, then we want it. So just wondering where those things are and what we can expect. Are we going to be cut at this time next year? Am I going to be cutting two, three, four million again? Okay. Well, I'm going to have to give you a little bit of a hypothetical because I, I haven't seen the Senate proposal yet that that's going to come at one o'clock this afternoon when it, it'll be a closed meeting, but uh, it will be public later today. Um, uh, all facilities, karen has been working on that. I, I don't know yet if it's, that, that would be part of the budget bill. We don't know. I don't know if, if Senator Weger has given you any indication of whether it will or won't be in. I don't think he has. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Buy him too. It's, yeah. Um, uh, we'll know that later today. I would imagine if it's not in the bill, Karn probably will have an amendment proposed in committee and probably on the floor. 
Um, you know, how that goes, we'll see. Uh, on funding, uh, unfortunately, when you look at what the Senate has talked about and what the governor has proposed, um, they're looking at, you've got two problems there. They're looking at a dollar figure, a percentage figure that's smaller than what you're talking about, and it's tied to mandated spending. So even though you get the money to spend, you don't get it to your general fund, you get it to do, do this thing and that thing and the other thing, which doesn't help you. Um, uh, I, I know that my colleagues, the GOP colleagues, certainly uh, will make very public note of that um, if that's what comes out in the final bill. Uh, and we certainly will propose changes and offer amendments to make that different. Uh, how successful we are, I don't know. Um, we have been successful in getting voices like yours uh, to very publicly feed back to Senator Weger and the majority members in the Senate to say, we're not looking for mandated new money, we're looking for options and we're looking for options that work. Uh, so hopefully we'll see that. I, I can't say that you won't. Uh, at one o'clock I'll know. Linda has a good, strong voice. Did everybody hear that question? It pertains to alternative facilities uh, levy. I can speak to that also. I carried the bill in the House. Uh, our, our House did not hear any of those bills. Uh, it's House File 87. And uh, I did put a handout on, on your tables there. If you take a look at the second page, it goes through uh, a little budget that we uh, our budget anyway, and the fiscal year 14-15, that's what we're currently in. If you take a look down at uh, E12 education, uh, we're currently at a $15.8 billion budget. Uh, we're proposing a $16.866 billion budget, so we're increasing E12 education by 1.059 uh, 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 billion. Now, if I had my way, I would put all that on, on the formula, but that's not the way it works. We'll probably have maybe f between 400 and 500 million dollars on the formula because I, I serve on the K-12 Education Committee and you have all these different parts of, K of K E-12 education where money is requested. And uh, so the, the chair, Loon, Representative Loon, she has to make the decision where that money is going to go. Of course, you got the, the Democrat uh, bill will be coming out and you got the governor's proposal. Not, I would say right now, uh, Linda, none of those three budgets serve what the Forest Lake School District needs. So. Questions? <clears throat> yes. Uh, again, the CSCN, and my question would be for our state senators. The CSCN account is all converted under broadband expansion as our number one top priority. We've heard through Representative Decker that unfortunately there's not funding in the House of the Board of Border Broadband. She's from Scandia and interested in the border to border grant program and she says all of it went last time to outstate rather than metro area. That sum it up pretty good. <laughs> She's Unfortunately, I don't have a really good answer for you. Neither Senator Housley nor I serve on the pr appropriate committees to have the insight as to what is going to be coming out of um, or coming out for their proposals there. Uh, you're, we're going to be, see these major budget bills getting released this week and probably getting debated on the Senate floor next week, more than likely. So you'll get an answer pretty quickly. But unfortunately, at this point, uh, neither Senator Housley nor I just have the expertise. We, we don't serve in the appropriate committees to have that insight. I, I, I have a hard enough time trying to stay on top of the committees that I serve on. So, unfortunately. Maybe we could talk after, so when we, we could put an amendment on the floor for that, because it's Senator Matt Schmidt from, I think he's Egan or Apple Valley, but I don't know why he's, he's not um, including the suburbs, but he's definitely traveling the state trying to get it up there. It, and it does make it a lot easier to sell a house in Scandia if there's broadband. <laughs> yes. So yeah, let's talk after and we can get an amendment. Which reminds me, some of these folks are willing to stay after the meeting, so if you're too shy to ask a question now, you can do that privately. Um, questions? Yes. Uh, 
Uh, good morning, uh, Brian Paddock, Executive Director at Birchwood Healthcare Center. And it seems to be we're pretty transportation heavy, but I just wanted to put the 800 pound gorilla out there in terms of the increase. Uh, what investments out there for increase in spending on the care for our elderly and aging? Uh, the question is, what can we do to increase spending for the care for our elderly? And I just want to throw a tagline out too, I can't take credit for it, but at another meeting, someone had a great point uh, where we struggle the most is recruiting the lower wage employees. We lose them the Burger King and McDonald's, and I heard the great line of, it's unfortunate that our society values the Whopper more than our elders. And I just want Did you get that question? I think so. Did you get So thanks for the question, good question. Um, we, uh, there are several proposals in the House to uh, better fund uh, the folks who take care of our uh, elderly uh, parents and grandparents. Uh, I have a bill up uh, today, as does uh, Representative Rarick from up in Kennebec County, to improve the formula for uh, reimbursement for um, uh, elder care facilities. I have two, North Branch and then in Chisago. Uh, Representative Rarick has one up in uh, Moore, I believe. And what, uh, there's a metro rate and a non-metro rate. So uh, if you look at the state of Minnesota, there's a donut hole right around the five county area, Kennebec, uh, Pine, um, Isanti, uh, Chisago, and one other, I don't remember what the other uh, county is. Everyone else, including, not everyone else, but many others, including the metro and all the way up through the Iron Range, get a higher rate. Well, that's dumb. So, I mean, um, so we have a bill, and we're hoping it'll go through, uh, that would increase the rates appropriately so, because I think uh, one of the two facilities in my area, they have uh, like 40 positions that they can't fill right now because they don't have the money. You know, they can only get so much from their patients because that's, uh, that's restricted by state uh, guidelines. So you need to be, be able to pay appropriately. They can't right now. That's a smaller bill. that We have a larger bill that would cover the whole state, which would in, improve the funding for the entire state uh, as well. So the, the more expensive one, I think, is around $300 million. Ours is in the uh, million-dollar range. Uh, again, today at, I think, it's 1245, both Representative Rarick and I are presenting our bill to the HHS uh, Finance Committee. Hopefully that'll go through and hopefully it'll get on the uh, on our uh, omnibus bill and get uh, enacted into law. We're really hoping so. We have, um, we, uh, we're uh, very optimistic. We have five more minutes for questions. Any other questions? I have one. What is your position? Tell us your position on the Metropolitan Council board members, either as elected, staggered terms, how can the formula be adjusted to better represent counties like Washington County? Met Council question? I'll just quickly comment. The areas that I represent are not included in the Metropolitan Council. And from my perspective, I'm just going to do everything I can to make sure that it doesn't come up to where we are. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let you guys talk about that. Um, we In caucus yesterday, uh, Senator Dave Osmick has a bill to abolish the Met Council, and he said, who wants on it? Everybody's hands went up. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. We really appreciate it. We've, uh, Ted's going to give some announcements, and then whoever can stay, if you'd stay and address individual questions, that's great. The two Bobs got to duck out and get to a meeting. Ted? Thank you. I think we should uh, give our guests here a round of applause. Thank them for taking time to speak with us. And uh, you're welcome to have a seat, or if you need to head out, you're welcome to head out. So thank you all very much for joining us. Um, there is a plastic tub making its way around the room. That is for a door prize drawing. So if you didn't get your card in that, it's sitting right there, so please do so. Um, just a couple announcements before we wrap up. Um, actually, let's, let's pause for a second. Everybody's sitting at a large table. So if you haven't already introduced yourself to everybody at the table, why don't you take a minute here, make sure everybody knows who they're sitting with and where they work. So we'll take a minute and do that first. I would like to take a moment um, to introduce you to the Forest Lake Area Chamber of Commerce board members who are here with us today. So if they would stand and let everybody know who they are. Um, let's see, I see Rob Collins from Collins Law Office. Rob Collins, wave. 
Uh, Larry Martini from the Forest Lake Area Schools. Uh, Bob Meissner from Famous Days. And uh, Sheila Waldock from the Waldock Custom Center. So thank you all very much for joining us. Um, again, I wanted to allow us to take a moment to express our appreciation to Famous Daves for hosting us. So thank you very much for having us this morning. Um, I'm going to introduce Bob Meissner, who is the Catering Manager and Community Outreach Director for Famous Daves. Famous Daves is not only hosting us this morning, they're also sponsoring this breakfast. So I'll let Bob have a few minutes to tell us what's uh, new and exciting here at Famous Daves. Bob? Morning, everyone. A um, few things I just want to talk about for Famous Daves. Uh, the first thing I'll bring up is um, we do have one new and exciting thing going on for the next four weeks. It's our promotion running. It is smoked turkey. So we have a wonderful smoked turkey salad. It has uh, blueberries and strawberries and the whole works in there. Um, we are doing a cold turkey sandwich with barbecue mayo on it and then of course the turkey dinner with gravy so keep that in mind if you're coming in in the next month or so um, a few other things i want to talk about is you know what we can do for you guys also um, in our catering arena we have a variety of different ways we can do that you can um, you know we can get everything <laughs> thank you alan <laughs> we can um, you know, if you're close and nearby and it's not going to have to travel far, you can always just come and pick it up. It saves a couple dollars on the delivery fee. Or you can have me bring it out there in the, uh, the, the truck you may have all noticed before with the lights going. Um, and then, of course, we do have the full service option. You know, if you're not looking at cleaning everything up and doing everything yourself, we'll bring everything there, set it up pretty much like we had it today and serve and clean you up and do all of that sort of thing for you um, and you know as far as prices goes a lot of other catering companies are you know about $25 a head we have meals starting at $7 a head for a sandwich and sides and go um, I think our most expensive meal is only about $14 with ribs pork chicken and a few side dishes on there so we have a variety of different options for uh, budgets and such also um, and a little about the facility here also, um, you know, you may have noticed it's a little smaller than a lot of other restaurants, but we still have a lot of room to accommodate groups and whatnot. Um, the semi-private area over here um, is good for parties of about up to 25 that we can um, cordon off the area. We can even set everything up buffet style for you instead of everybody ordering an individual meal. Um, and that'll usually bring the price point down a little bit for you too. Um, and that way, if you don't want to have all the cleanup at your place, bring it to ours and, and we get to do all that. Um, we also have the outside, um, we have a deck and a porch. So if the weather turns a little frightful on us, we can all come back in the screened in porch and not get rained on. It's really good for like groom suppers and um, things of that nature that are only about 20 people or so out there also and we can always set everything up a face style out there too so it's a it's a nice option out there if the weather permitting of course and um, about the last thing I also want to mention I just wanted to give props to holiday for providing us with the coffee today just so they said if they were gonna give it to me they wanted me to mention it so, <laughs> so I thought I'd do that and I'll turn it back over to Ted Thank you very much, Bob. Thanks for having us. And uh, for those of you who uh, had the opportunity to attend our member mixer two weeks ago, um, I'm not sure if it was the good weather or the good promotion or maybe the um, catering from Famous Dave's that drew quite a turnout. So um, thanks very much, Bob. A uh, couple other just very brief announcements. Um, our monthly Coffee and Connections networking group um, is tomorrow morning third Wednesday of the month at 745 at the Forest Lake Ice Arena. Um, Coffee, and Conne Coffee and Connections is a facilitated and structured networking group. So if you are interested in working to grow your referral network, um, we'd invite you to join us. It's free to chamber members, 745 to 845 in the morning tomorrow at the Ice Arena. Um, I am also excited to announce that May is membership month here at the Forest Lake Area Chamber of Commerce and we're excited to launch our first annual membership drive. So in your packet of materials on your table, 
are three pieces of information that I would ask you to pull out. One that looks like this, one that's got some staples on it, and uh, the last is our brand new chamber uh, informational brochure, which was provided for us by Rapid Press Printing, so thanks to them for doing that for us. Um, our membership drive, let's see if I can find my notes here. So um, first of all, we have some exciting events and some exciting contests planned for May. And um, for chamber members who refer a new member to the Chamber of Commerce, we have an exciting contest for you where you can win some great prizes. It's explained on the single flyer that's attached in there. But for every new member you refer to the chamber who joins the chamber, um, you'll automatically receive a $10 gift card that's valid here at Famous Dave's. You'll automatically receive a listing in our um, e-newsletter and our newspaper ad in June in the Forest Lake Times, and we'll personally recognize you at our June membership event. You will also be entered to win one of several great prizes. We have a $100 gift certificate from Forest Lake Travel that can be used to purchase any travel anywhere in the world, a quarter page ad in the Forest Lake Connection publication, quarter page color profile of your business in the Forest Lake Times, um, one $125 registration for our chamber golf tournament, or a one level chamber membership upgrade. So some great prizes for both you and your business for referring new members. Um, and the individual who refers the most new members to the Chamber of Commerce through May 31st will actually receive a full page ad in the Forest Lake Lowdown newspaper for their business. So some tremendous opportunities to um, help the Chamber, help grow the Chamber, but also provide additional visibility for your business. One of the tools that we're going to provide to you to help make this possible is our May Membership Luncheon. And our May Membership Luncheon, which is described on the flyer with a couple pages stapled to it, is going to be a progressive networking luncheon. It'll be a three-course meal. You'll be seated at a different table during each course. And over the course of the, me over the, course of the meal, you have the opportunity to meet 21 businesses, 21 new contacts. Um, so that's a very exciting event. And as a chamber member, you are also invited to bring a guest to that for free. So if there's someone who um, is a prospect for your business, maybe a long lost client who isn't a chamber member, um, what a perfect excuse to give them a call, invite them out for a free lunch, let them see the value of chamber membership, let you look good in their eyes, and let them enjoy a free lunch. So there's information about that here, the flyer that's stapled to the top is meant to be given to um, folks who might be interested in joining the chamber. Uh, membership information, all membership materials are on our website, so you can download those. And then we also have our great new membership brochure, which we would encourage you to use to share with those folks. So membership month is coming up in May. Watch for more information. Um, we are excited about that and uh, hope it'll be a good time and very excited about the May membership event. I would also just like to take a moment now to introduce a couple new members of the chamber who are joining us here today. Um, ask them if they would like to to come up here and uh, say a few words about themselves or their business. And we will start with Ingi Andre from uh, TitleSmart. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ingi Andre with TitleSmart. Um, we have offices uh, in all over the metro, and I can travel anywhere to do closings for the real estate uh, or refinance needs. So if you know of anybody who is looking to buy, sell, or refinance their home or realtors that are looking for a new closer, please send them my way. I am Ingi Andre with TitleSmart. Thank you. Thank you. And we have Joe and Danielle Haller from Fusion Tech Services. Good morning. I'm Joe Haller with Fusion Design Studio, transitioning to Fusion Tech Services. Um, we've been in the area quietly for probably 13 years, just opened our retail store a couple of years ago. Some of you have been there. Many of you have probably read about us. Uh, we started intentionally doing computer sales and repairs and were rapidly convinced by the public that we needed to do cell phone repairs. And we have also added four prepaid T-Mobile brands to our services, the biggest being Metro PCS, and we're basically here in Forest Lake to be the better buy in the area. 
and we just joined the chamber after spending the last couple of years building the retail business and being confident that we can now offer our services to our fellow business people and not disappear next year on you. So thanks for having us. Well, thank you. Welcome to the chamber. Um, just a reminder, there is an evaluation form on your tables. If you wouldn't mind filling that out, let us um, know your thoughts on this event if you have any suggestions. There is also an attendee roster that also has contact information for the legislators who are here today. So if they've had to sneak out, um, there's information here on how to follow up with them. And finally, I think we have our drawing. Hopefully everybody got their names in to win a a fabulous gift bag here from Famous Dave's. And Karen, you're the closest to me, so we're going to let you draw. Winner is Rob Collins from Collins Law. <laughs> Congratulations. All right, thank you all very much for joining us. We hope you enjoy the rest of the day and hope to see you at uh, Coffee and Connections tomorrow or at our May membership luncheon on the 12th. Thanks a lot.